Well, here we go. Let's jump in, talk about what is integration services. You can see here the layout of the chapter. So right here, we're over on the left side, the overview of SSIS. This is just going to be a couple of different videos here. Once we get through these couple of videos, then it's, it's, we're really going to be into demo mode. So this last video, this video, the next video, they're kind of this lecture style. The predominance of this course is more of a demo style where you actually watch me do it, kind of a screencast approach. It's the same as being in the classroom with me, except you just can't see my pretty little face, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. How about you stop just for a second, and I want you to think, let's talk about some medium to large size companies. And I want you to picture a couple of medium large size companies that are great companies that you think of when you think of great products great whatever okay so at some point they were a good company what turns what are some of the attributes slash factors that make a good company become a great company you could pause the video you could uh, not pause the video and wait for me I don't care your choice just think of a couple I had a few here to kind of spark the discussion. Invariably, you're going to have thought of maybe some different ones than I did. But I thought these were maybe some common things. You have great leadership or great products or great processes. You might have all of these. You might have some of them. Um, happy employees, a particular commitment to um, green energy. You could have lots of different things that take, help take a company from good to great. Now, those are all reasons that a company can be go, also become a good company. But to become a great company, it may require some of those things. But there's also at least one common denominator among all great companies. And that is the ability to make informed decisions quickly and with consensus. Now, you might say, well, you know, so-and-so company is a great company, but they don't have great leadership because they had such a great product and they were the first one out there. They had a competitive advantage. They were the first to market. Okay, you don't become a great company without the ability to make informed decisions quickly and with consensus. Now, I choose this word decisions here. Now, that, that could actually be a, a whole bunch of things. could relate to policy. Uh, particularly important would be forecasting. You, know, you can't raise more money. You can't loan or lend, get more money from the bank uh, without uh, sales forecasting. You don't know where to put your money without good marketing forecasting, uh, good segmentation, demographics. Those are all things that I'm talking about when I say decisions. Now, to make an informed decision quickly means you got to have access to the raw data, okay? whether it be the demographic information, where your customers are coming from, where on the planet your products are at any given moment. Gathering consensus means that that data has to be in a format that all of the stakeholders can understand. Now, I'm generally not talking about just in a cellular, uh, tabular-based format. You know, your CEOs, CTOs, they don't probably want to write select statements. We're not going to ask John down in HR to go up and write a very complicated 12-table join in SQL Server. So, oops, the problem that we face is that organizations generally have data in a lot of different formats relational databases, spreadsheets, desktop databases, text files. You know what a CSV file, that's probably the only one that I think some people might not be familiar with here, the CSV, the comma separated values, generally just a .CSV file. And the .DAT is not necessarily a file type, uh, but a lot of times you see applications export text data and they put a, .d, a .dat extension on it. Now, so every organization has to deal with this struggle 
of working with all these different data types, all these different formats, proprietary, some are open, is some are distributed, one's on this server, one's on another, some's in Los Angeles, some is in London. I, I just threw a quick example here off the top of my head. You have a, a company that does their invoicing maybe in QuickBooks or Excel. Then once they get the order, it's entered into a, a CRM, a customer relationship management system built in Oracle. Uh, then the customers, when they actually log in and want to view their orders, that's done on a SQL Server 2000 based website, maybe an ASP or an ASP.NET uh, solution. And then you have a ticket tracking system that maybe runs on MySQL with PHP. Okay, so there's a, this is just one of many examples. As you're watching this, you're probably thinking of your own scenarios that you have to deal with on a daily basis. The point is everybody has to deal with this disparate systems. You've got lots of different data sources, and they're all kind of related, or a lot of them are kind of related.